All right, our wood panel is completely dried. I'm just gonna put it this way on here. So I've got my seahorse printed out the size that I want to fit on this panel. The PDF for this is, um, or the PDF link for this particular seahorse is in the supply list. Um, if you didn't have the same size panel as I'm using, you would need to change the size of it, or I'll have the website where I get the images from, and you can choose whatever image you're wanting to create the same technique with. So in order to transfer our image to our panel, you could download the SVG from the site that I get these images from. If you have a die cutting machine or an electronic cutting machine, um, and then just put that in there and use removable vinyl but not everyone has one of those. So I just figured I'd show you how to do it without having an electronic cutting machine. So I just took some charcoal and rubbed it on the back. And then you'll notice that I get a whole bunch of powder there. I wanna clean that completely off. Now I am gonna have some of this charcoal rub onto here where I don't necessarily want it. And I'm just gonna use a cloth to wipe that off. But let's get any excess off, put this on here. Now I'm trying to center my seahorse in the middle of, in the middle of my wood panel. I'm just eyeballing it. And what I'm gonna do is use a ballpoint pen. You could use a stylus, you could use a pencil. Basically you want something that's got a pointed edge that you can trace around the detail, the detail. And I'm only doing this half of the seahorse because the other half we're gonna have our alcohol ink blowing. Clearly I can't talk and trace at the same time. Now you Add in whatever details you want. This part here, I'm just gonna leave it because I think without it, you'd still know that it was a seahorse. And it's really easy to see exactly where it is that you're tracing. But you could, if you chose, use a different colored pen. So then you'd be able to see it a little bit easier. But even with the black pen and the black ink there, I'm not having any trouble seeing exactly where I'm going. So you see how I have my horse, seahorse design there. Here's the places that my hand were, um, my hand was pressing down. So I have some charcoal transfer there. And all I'm gonna do to remove that is take a baby wipe and just wipe it off before we go to the next step. We just definitely wanna make sure that is all wiped off before we put any resin coats on because if you put a resin coat on top of that, it is enclosed and you cannot remove it after that. All right, so that is good. So now I've got some masking fluid in a bottle that's got a fine tip to it and I am going to trace around the edge of that. Now I am gonna lose some of the detail on, let me show you that part, this part here. I am gonna lose a little bit of the detail on that, but what I can do if I really like that detail and want it there, I can take, I can take a paintbrush and brush a part of that in before we put our coat of resin on top. But it's one of those things that you might not even know if it's a detail that you really want or find is necessary until we pull this masking fluid and the liquid latex off. So I'm using the masking fluid right around the image just because I have a little bit more control. I'm gonna let this completely dry. And then I have some liquid latex that I'm gonna brush on the rest of this front of the panel. And the reason I'm doing that is because sometimes when you're working with alcohol inks, 
it can splatter a little bit and I want to give it the best chance of not splattering on this white section. I want to keep that as pristine as possible. So I want to protect that. You could take some like painter's tape or something like that and use that to protect it. That would work as well. And I will be doing the painter's tape on the sides of the panels. Or I might change my mind and use the liquid latex. I'm just not sure. All right, so that is completely outlined. Now I'm gonna let that dry. And once that's dry, I'm going to add some liquid latex. This is just gonna be easier to brush it around the whole rest of the surface here. I want to get this a little bit thicker here. There we go. So you can see it's a creamy opaque right now. When it's dry, it tends to turn transparent, but you should see, be able to see the difference when I'm back and it is dry. All right, so our masking fluid is mostly dry. There's a few sections here that aren't fully dry, but you can see the difference. It gets a little bit, um, a little bit on the creamy side. Sorry, it gets a little bit on the clear side when it's dry and it's creamier looking when it is wet. Let's get this out of here. I'm gonna put these on Peter's pyramids just to raise them up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take some oops, painter's tape. I should have done this ahead of time. I'm gonna take some painter's tape here just to protect some of the edges and then do the liquid latex on top of it. So I also don't want any splatters going down the sides here, which is why I'm protecting it. Let's do this one this way here. Because for some reason, this particular tape seems to like to Alright, and this way I'm going to be using up less, less liquid latex as well. So see how there's no fine spout here and you're just basically pouring a puddle. That's why I didn't want to do that for the edges of the seahorse because you would have very little control over it. I have a little silicone brush here that I'm using to push it towards the mask it, masking fluid. Sorry. And I'm not trying to go over it. I'm just trying to um, go a little bit or go up to it and then overlap it just slightly. But I don't want it to go into my seahorse design. And this very similar to the masking fluid is creamy when it is wet and goes clear when it dries. And I want a decent amount on there because it's gonna make it easier to lift it up once. Um, once I'm done the first layer. And this step is gonna to need, to need to be repeated between each of the layers because I'm doing resin between each of the layers. If you wanted to do it and do alcohol ink over top of alcohol ink, you wouldn't need to, you could just leave this one layer and then do it and then just do a layer of resin at the end. I like doing layers of resin in between my alcohol ink layers simply because it adds dimension to the piece as well as the fact that then when I put the next layers of alcohol ink, it doesn't rehydrate my previous layers. So I'm gonna leave this to completely dry and then I will start my next step once it is totally dry and we'll start doing the alcohol inks.